Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got part two of my Cardinals full offensive breakdown. Uh, but before I get into the video, I just want to wish you guys a happy 4th of July weekend. Hope you guys had a happy and safe holiday and your family's all doing good uh, in these trying times. So just want to give you guys a shout out. Appreciate the support on this channel as always. And other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. I got another play out of this formation I really like. It's the double post. It's the one at the bottom there. Uh, once again, I wish I could put my fastest guy here. I guess it's going to be Clay. I think some of these guys are a little bit faster. I wish I could put a receiver. That really would set this play off. Uh, but that's fine. I'm going to go with the double post. We're going to pick that. Then we're just going to go random nickel. So all I'm going to do right here is motion out my tight end to the line. And you're going to see how that route right there um, against a lot of zones really gets out wide to the side. Except for like right here. Like right there. I mean, that was that was probably a cover too. Because I'm really just following him the whole way. He's going to get open against a lot. So let's, let's watch the replay real quick. Because I, I was thinking cover three, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, it, it flipped into a cover three. But you can see how this guy is pulling route. He, go, he pulls the cover down. This guy's pulling the coverage back, and then this guy just gets left wide open in space. And, it, and certain cover three seems to get, get open immediately right underneath it. And then you can see right here, I just have to hold it a little bit, and he gets open right outside of it. So very unique route. Like I said, all you got to do is motion out. I wish you could mirror that motion on, on the previous play, but you can't. I also can put this guy here. I like to put Kirk on a better on a better comeback route. That comeback route's not that great. So like I said, right here, we're just waiting for that to clear. And we're getting another big play. Almost took that to the house. You know what I'm saying? He just gets open every time. Super glitchy route setup. I haven't seen this route. I mean, it's like a wheel route, but it's augmented. It's just not the same. I haven't seen anything like this in a lot of uh, a lot of different plays. So right here, I mean, I got my RB route too. I gotta I gotta remember that I'll have that over the middle as well. And I think that was a blitz that made it a little bit easier to get it to him. This play doesn't really have a man beater though. That's about the only thing. So I'm gonna put the X route on a comeback route. Um, it's important to diagnose that. Because if it's a cover three, I mean, I'm going to typically put that guy on a different route. As you can see right there, I mean, Clay, he just gets outside just every time. I mean, the zone coverage was there. We could watch the replay. The zone coverage was there. It was tight. So like I said, this play right here, I mean, I know that my, you know, I could easily hit this check down. And I know that that defender pretty much has to respect that check down as well. As you can see, he hesitates. But I'm already throwing the ball because I know that even though he looks like he's covered, I'm getting outside of this guy. You know what I mean? I'm getting over the top of him every time. This guy just goes straight to the sideline, and the defense doesn't usually follow that far. So I'll steal that for 10, 15 yards all game. Just about every major zone coverage, Clay's going to get outside of. But like I said, I don't have a man coverage beater, so i got to put somebody into that man coverage. Like right here. That's, that looked like it was probably a blitz. But you can see I can just take it right away. Sometimes i got to wait a little bit. But he's going to get outside every time. Let's go and let's watch the replay. I said right here, I mean, I can see it. I'm just reading space. I don't have to read the coverage, even though realistically, because I'm staring him down, I had a big play right over the middle too. <laughs> so like I said, I mean, I'm just trying to prove a point that this route can always get open. As you can see right here, I mean, those are my two major reads. It's pretty much, like I said, it's like a verticals play when you, when you look at it like for that from that perspective. You typically in your verticals play, you have a guy going over the middle. If the user goes outside, he's open across the middle. Uh, but typically your first read is going to be this outside guy. And I get a really big play. I mean, I, I probably could have got maybe a few yards more because I got that big catch and run but ultimately like I said I'm gonna beat this play is gonna beat every zone in the game he's either gonna get underneath it he's gonna get outside of it he's gonna outlast it you just have to really read the spacing and know when to throw and that's essentially that's essentially it and then like I said your other reads gonna be right in front of you so as good as that play is it's also a one play touchdown versus cover three so all I'm gonna do to make that variation is put my at my X route on an out route and then smart route and that's why I was saying earlier you really have to know what type of coverage you're looking at because if it's a man coverage you're gonna want that comeback route because none of these other routes beat man so you need that check down but if you know your opponent's running a cover three and you want to try to take a shot you just have to run this play just like this I blocked my running back this time and you can see I mean I get I get past I really didn't get a good throw for whatever reason but you can see he gets passed through space so that's pretty much you know like I said the biggest issue with this will be getting the time needed like I said, if I'm going for the one play touchdown, I could probably block that that uh, that tight end as well. But you could see, I mean, there's space. I could I could score that. He actually had to come back. I mean, this, this guy's really floating balls. But I could have scored that from anywhere. Let's go ahead and let's move the ball back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that ball was in the air a long time. So I could use a little more space here. So if your opponent's running cover three, here you go. You got a cover three beater. Your opponent will most likely try to use your clay. 
that motion will probably that'll draw their attention they'll leave the center of the field and then you pretty much just have like I said I really had to make some magic happen there <laughs> like the pressure was coming but you can see I mean it's just it's getting passed every time so I mean you can see I have options I can take the short route I can take the deep route you know especially against cover three cover two like I said the B route's gonna get open a lot of times right between cover two so you know the hardest play with this you know especially with this offensive line being so bad is waiting for that guy to get past but you can see if it's a cover three beater all the way Next up, we got the halfback toss. This player right here, I mean, just as long as you can accelerate a little bit, I mean, that's the only issue with this play is, is the full, the running back doesn't accelerate because of the angle. But as long as you get a little bit of space to accelerate, you can see you can get some blocks and get a pretty good outside run. This play works best when you're sprinting out to the edge, without a doubt, because you have to get acceleration to make this play successful. And the only way you can do that is you sprint, sprint wide. But you can, you know, defenders sometimes can blow that up, as you can see right there. I mean, the blocking isn't isn't official, but it's a good play. Um, there's going to be a couple of plays in this scheme, uh, but the first one, the one that I'm the most impressed with, is the RPO read Y flat. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna pick that. I want to make sure I got my fastest guy right here. i got to be honest with you, I don't even know who the speed guys are on my team, so I'm just going to leave Charles Clay in. So in the theme of, you know, hitting screens and uh, motion swing passes and stuff like that, this is a play that fits perfectly into that mold. As you can see right here, it's essentially just an amazing setup play to the tight end. Look at that. That's so nasty. Like, this is like a handoff that you're just taking to the house. i got to watch a replay on that. Like I said, let's take a look at Death Chart real quick before I go into the replay because this guy is not that fast, he's not that athletic. Charles Clay, he's only an 82 speed. I should have probably put this guy, Daryl Daniels, in there um, because you know it's all about a catch and run after the play. So like I said, just to sell you, this guy isn't even that great of an athlete. I'll also show real quick the settings because I do this every once in a while just to show you. It is on all Madden competitive. I haven't messed with the sliders because people accuse me of that stuff in the comments because I make this game look so easy sometimes that they can't believe it's on all Madden. So like I said, into the instant replay. Look at how this sets up. I mean, I'm really only making one read. I'm reading these guys out here. If these guys crash and shoot into the play, I'm hitting that tight end instantly. Look at this, man. This is just nasty catch and run. Of course, like I said, I'm watching them. They're crashing in, especially this guy. He's probably the most important. They're crashing in, and then boom, I'm just getting it out. I just have a nasty screenplay that nobody knows about this play. You know what I mean? Like, this is not a play that anybody knows exists, so they're not going to be expecting this. They're just going to see a flat route. They're not going to be expecting a flat route with a screen where you got blockers that set up so nasty like this, they just spring me down the sideline. So you're going to hit people with this play. Like I said, this whole playbook is a glitch. Like, everything in here is just essentially a complete cheat code they all look like college offensive plays and this is just another one like I said I'm taking Charles Clay who's really just a nobody tight end and I'm housing him because the blocking on this is just so dirty and if you run this play a lot and your opponent starts to try to cheat over to that that's perfect that's when the, that's when the slant route's gonna get open so like I said this isn't necessarily the time but if your opponent starts trying to take away that that tight end you can hit him with that slant the middle of the field will typically be vacated uh, but like I said you're just reading that one guy and then boom, I don't think I can make a dude miss this. I can't, oh, Clay, Clay's kind of nice, I ain't gonna lie. He can get more jukes than some running backs in this game. So he's definitely a good guy for a catch and run. And then like I said, ultimately too, you have your inside zone, uh, which is probably the least effective out of all the plays, but it's still there. And I think this is a zone read where I can take off with the quarterback too, so there's always an option. I mean, this, there's four options on this play. So you essentially have four reads, but without a doubt, the first read is going to be the nastiest to this tight end. Like I said, that's just, you're just stealing yards. It's lightning quick. You're getting the ball out. You don't even have to move with the quarterback. You're just catching it and releasing right there. I didn't make a good read, but obviously there's times when you can hit that guy. So you have to watch out for that, like right there. Go ahead and I'll go to the replay. Like I said, it's not 100% foolproof, but it pretty much is against zone. This has to be a man coverage. Essentially, man coverages have, have an issue with this sometimes, but zone coverages, you're pretty much nailing that for a big play every time. So like I said, I'm watching that guy outside. If he shoots in, like right there, he doesn't shoot in, just wait for that, you know, wait for that, that over the top. And I might be able to house this with Slow Larry Fitzgerald. I almost housed the slant with Slow Larry. So we're just going to run this a few more times. Like I said, I would like to hit this run because obviously the inside, it's an inside zone, so you can definitely have success. I mean, I wouldn't recommend holding it with the quarterback, but even if you'd like, right there, I thought about it, and then I, I took it down, and I hit the tight end. You know what I mean? Like, I have that option all the way through. So even if I make a mistake, I still have that guy outside. Let's watch the replay on what I did there. Because I wanted to hold it with the QB, but then I, I, it was a bad read. I got two dudes right in front of me. So instead of, like, some plays, you're pretty much stuck here. You just got to take a big loss. But here, I can just go ahead and still, I still can flip it out. 
to this tight end and get a big play. I mean, this is like this is like playing three card Monty. Like you're just gonna beat your opponent up and down the field with this every time. I think the slant was open there too. If I waited long enough, the slant's gonna be there. You can see he's crossing the defender. Because of all the options here, I mean, this is just gonna be one of the hardest plays to defend right there. We'll just hit that slant. Like I said, if there's not if there's nothing inside there, I'm gonna take that slant all day. That's gonna be just as money as anything else. Let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, that slant, the way that the formation gives away whether the slant's going to work or not. And look at that. I take Christian Kirk right through the defense. Like I said, this play, you can house call. I mean, this is just, this whole playbook is really hard to cover. So let's go and let's move on. I got some more plays just like this. Except we got the halfback slip screen. Just motion out the, uh, the running back to the line. He'll get open under a lot of zones quicker that way. Um, and if that's not there, if it's a... If it's a Hard flat, obviously you got the screen on the other side, but it's a good misdirection. Your opponent will have to chase one. And then the other one typically is open. So like I said here, this looks more like a something that'll allow underneath coverage. I don't have to I'm not forced to do the uh, the, the, the screenplay. I have another option which is nice. Screenplays can be good from time to time, but they can also get you in trouble if they're the only option. So I like to have something that gives me another option, which is basically this play right here. So you're really going left or right. If it's not, if this isn't open, it's typically got to be the screenplay. Screenplays can get blown up, but they won't necessarily get picked off if the user starts covering this side. And you got to go to the other side because, like I said, I mean, you can take a loss on a bad screenplay, but you ain't gonna, typically ain't going to get picked off by the computer on a screenplay. Next, we got the motion P A Y cross. Got that same motion back underneath, and now you got a little bit of a better option over the top. Um, so, you know, if people are, if, if users start taking off at an underneath route, you have something over the top that's a little bit better. But ultimately, I mean, these swing passes are pretty much where it's at. The play action kind of messes up the timing of it, though. So it's not as good. Except we got the motion spot. Another player, we're really just trying to get it out to the Y route, but there's some other, you know, a little bit better routes. I mean, right there, I mean, they're just sending some serious blitzes but you know all these plays are really are really gonna be best throwing it out to that type of receiver right there you, you can go. put the B hey. on a drag or on a streak to try to help get the Y route or the um, the A route open I say right there you can even like you know the covers drop back I can just wait to, to make my determination but ultimately it's like a cover two like a regular cover two play or a cover three play so I'm just kind of I don't have to dig it out right away. This particular play, I can wait to find out if Hogan's going to get open or not, which sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. Next up, we got the shotgun slot offset. We're going to do the motion Y stick. So, I mean, a lot of times, I feel like they might have patched this already a little bit uh, with, with how these, um, these, these routes work. But you can see, I mean, I'm pretty much picking this play just to get it to the running back. So unless it's a cover too hard flat, you know what I'm saying, it doesn't really matter. So, I mean, this is, like I said, right here. Like I said, <laughs> I'm going to take my chances with that nine times out of ten. That's essentially the point of this whole play. Ready. Ready. Here we go, but you can, you know, catch and run, turn up field, typically pretty well. As long as the blocking sets up a little bit. But that's, just, like I said, that's why I'm taking this. And if I go in there, I'll probably go across to the slant. I mean, the slant's going to be good. Ooh, man, I just shook and shook two of them guys in there. Like I said, this is really like a setup play for other plays anyway. So like I said, right there, man, boom, I hit him with that slant. You know what I'm saying? Like if they're gonna, if they're not gonna, if they're not gonna follow that. I mean, I really don't have many other routes. Just kind of a comeback route. And this play doesn't really have blocking like a traditional play like this would have. So to me, a lot of times I'm leaving this guy out naked anyway. So you know, to me, the slant might be the better play. Next up, we got the RPO counter read. This play right here is really money um, against everything but cover two. Like I say, you can see here, like, I mean, it's just, you know, a lot of times the blocking will set up something nasty. Uh, just as long as it ain't cover two. Cover two is going to sniff this out. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm not really getting, I'm not really getting the blocks right now. I don't really have physical receivers that can block out there. But, you know, this is a really good, really good play you can see right there i mean that's just like whew, man we're gone <laughs> you know what I mean? oh no come on it's whatever but you can see i mean i'm just flipping it out there real quick i'm just i'm not even moving i'm just catching the ball holding y you know what i'm saying
catching the ball, holding wide. There's other plays in this route. I mean, the runs, they're, they're not very good, though. It's just about this play right here. So I'll just go ahead and just flip it out. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't even touch the sticks. I stepped out of bounds? Don't even touch the sticks. Don't even move the quarterback because you'll get inaccurate throws. Just catch it, flip it out. You know what I mean? And that dude, he was <laughs> some stupid animation right there. He just like warped. He should have never caught the guy in the first place. He just like warped to the ball. So like I said, right there. And we're just hitting the we're hitting the gun button. Turn up field. So like I said, real easy way to steal yards right there. Next we next up we got the RPO zone bubble. So once again, I mean you're just kind of chucking it out. Catching and flipping it out to this guy. That's pretty much it. Nothing really else to this play. I mean, you have um, a route on the other side. It's like an option route. But if you're calling this play, it's really just to do this. Just to hit this guy and catch and turn it up the field quick. If the defense is sliding to it, though, hold A. And you can give it to the, give it to the running back, although right there. I mean, I had a lane, but he caught me. I still got 10 yards falling forward. But you can see there's lanes there, too. So it's really, you know, the, the, the outside receiver really doesn't have much of an option. It's really just this guy who's a good play. You know what I'm saying? You can turn up field with it. Or uh, the inside zone. Here go, here go. Step one eighty. Step. So here we go. Like I said, that's you get you get some blocking, you're gonna be gone. Next we next up we got the RPO zone bubble. So once again, I mean you're just kind of chucking it out, catching and flipping it out to this guy. That's pretty much it. Nothing really else to this play. I mean, you have um, a route on the other side. It's like an option route. But if you're calling this play, it's really just to do this. Just to hit this guy and catch and turn it up the field quick. If the defense is sliding to it, though, hold A. And you can give it to the, give it to the running back, although right there. I mean, I had a lane, but he caught me. I still got 10 yards falling forward, but you can see there's lanes there, too. So it's really, you know, the, the, the outside receiver really doesn't have much of an option. It's really just this guy who's a good play. You know what I'm saying you can turn up field with it. Or uh, the inside zone. Here we go, here we go. Step one eighty. So here we go. Like I said, that's you get you get some blocking, you're gonna be gone. Next we next up we got the RPO zone bubble. So once again, I mean you're just kind of chucking it out, catching and flipping it out to this guy. That's pretty much it. Nothing really else to this play. I mean, you have um, a route on the other side. It's like an option route. But if you're calling this play, it's really just to do this. Just to hit this guy and catch and turn it up the field quick. If the defense is sliding to it, though, hold A. And you can give it to the, give it to the running back, although right there. I mean, I had a lane, but he caught me. I still got 10 yards falling forward. But you can see there's lanes there, too. So it's really, you know, the, the, the outside receiver really doesn't have much of an option. It's really just this guy who's a good play. You know what I'm saying you can turn up field with it. Or uh, the inside zone. Here we go, here we go. Step one eighty. Step. So here we go. Like I said, that's you get you get some blocking, you're gonna be gone. Next up, we got the RPO read bubble. Step one so this play right here, man. I'm just basically swinging it out. There's no other real read. Uh, then uh, I mean, you can't hand it off to the running back, <laughs> but. But that's it. So it's really just these two guys. You got to hold A to give it to the back. If you if you find the reads better, handing it off, you gotta you gotta hold A. And like I said, to me, it's the, if you're calling plays like these, it's because you want that outside run or that outside catch. So I'm just gonna most likely nine times out of ten use that. If I'd have waited a little bit longer until that cornerback was inside because he's taken off, it would have been would have been a good idea. But these swing passes, I mean, you know. Like I said, they'll, they'll get the user's attention. He'll probably be chasing, but for whatever reason, the, the CPU cornerbacks don't do a very good job with him. So that's ultimately where it's going to count. And if the, if, the, if the user is taking off to that, obviously the inside run's going to be good. And it's not going to be really good against the, against the computer because they're pretty much stacking for it. But against the user, it will work pretty good. Next up, we got the shakes. Sounds funny to say that. Motion out this running back again. Like I said, he'll get open a lot of times. 
under a lot of coverages. That's pretty much the play. I mean, there's not a lot else going on here. These 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 curl routes don't really work anymore. The C routes. So it's pretty much all you got uh, is this and then the running back. Um, so, you know, like I said, this player here pretty much is just beat up the flats in like a cover three. Pretty much all you got. Next up, we got the shakes. Sounds funny to say that. Motion out this running back again. Like I said, he'll get open a lot of times under a lot of coverages. That's pretty much the play. I mean, there's not a lot else going on here. These, these, these curl routes don't really work anymore. The C routes. So it's pretty much all you got uh, is this and then the running back. Um, so, you know, like I said, this player right here is pretty much just beat up the flats in like a cover three. Pretty much all you got. Next up, we got the fullback inside. It's just going to be a quick inside, you know, inside run. Um, you already have a running back in the fullback spot. That's how the formation's designed, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it's obviously going to be just a good inside run. It's not going to be nothing spectacular, but there can be some big runs out of it. This formation is mostly about the pass play, so it's definitely good to mix in. Right here, I mean, they're, they're, they're sending a double safety blitz, and I just break it outside for a big run. So obviously, like, you know, sometimes you got to take it outside. Just going to read this run inside out. I'm going to try to take it inside if I can, but you can see there's a pretty good angle to take it outside. Next up out of the shotgun split flex, we have the halfback slip screen. So I'm just going to motion over Olsen. He's going to be, um, you know, my first read. If he gets open, like right there, they jammed off, so he's going to get open and run up the sideline. That's going to be one of my better plays on this. Cover three and cover four. Cover two is going to have that problem. Here it looks like a cover three or a cover one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just hit that guy for a nice catch and run up the sideline. To me, it's like a really easy play to steal all game. Um, and then obviously, you know, the, the, the screen plays there, but that's not that great in my opinion. Next up, we got the PA tight end slide. This play here, I mean, you know, it's just, it's very similar to some other plays that I've put out. The comeback route's probably the safest route. Um, if, the, if the middle routes and the, and the underneath routes don't get open, typically the comeback route will. Um, but you're really just watching the, the coverage there. So like a man coverage, definitely. That's pretty much your only option here for man coverage. So the second you see guys following tight, you pretty much know where you got to go with the ball. Um, other than that, I mean, there's a... Uh, So the second you see guys following closely, you know that you really only have one option with the ball, which is throwing in this break and then coming, getting that comeback route on them. Some good, some good routes over the middle, though. Um, typically, I mean, you got to make your determination pretty quickly, um, but you know you, you have some good crossing routes. And then obviously these running backs, or um, you know, they're they're good underneath for good catch and runs if the coverage drops back. It didn't really cut drop back there. But, uh, but like I said, you're pretty much just watching, you know, you're, to make the read, you're really just watching the middle route first. And then if you see he's not open, it's typically going to be the comeback route. So you're starting off with the RB route. If he's not there, then you're going straight to your to your comeback route or your running backs. So right here, they left him open underneath. So I'll take what I can get. Next up, we got the 689 hook. This play here, all you want to do is motion out the uh, Olsen here. You know, it's just he's going to get into the flats quite a bit for a good catch and run. That's really the only play. The comeback route on the other running back is probably the second best play. Um, you know, because the user will probably start following this. I didn't even put him in. I didn't even put him in motion that time. You can see how quickly he gets out into the flats. So, to me, this is just another good flat beater play. Next up, we got the shovel option. It's just a, a good play. Um, you got your running back and your fullback. You just pick which one you want to pitch it to when you're running. Obviously, you want your, your speed guy out here where Olsen is. He's not a speed guy, but he still made the he still made it work. If I had McCaffrey there, it'd be nice. Next up, we got the shovel option. It's just a, a good play. Um, you got your running back and your fullback. You just pick which one you want to pitch it to when you're running. Obviously, you want your, your speed guy out here where Olsen is. He's not a speed guy, but he still made the, he still made it work. If I had McCaffrey there, it'd be nice. Next up is the PAH wheel. Good motion out of this halfback. If it's a cover three or cover one, he's going to be a big play. If it's a cover three, he's going to be big underneath, like this appears that it is. And if it's a cover one, he's going to be big down the field. 
Uh, also, man zero would be another situation where he's a good play down the field. Um, other than that, I mean, I could pass block the running back just to add a little bit of protection. My check downs on the other side are pretty good, high and low. Um, you know, I, I have like the A route is probably like the least, the latest developing one, and then the drag would probably be best against uh, man. But ultimately, this play is all about the running back route right here. And you can tell he's pretty much, oh, that was a corner blitz. I knew something was up because there was nobody over there. And sure enough, that's going to be a huge mistake for any defense to make. So, like I said, any man coverage, any cover three, uh, this guy's going to be a huge play. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. This play is good because the running back can can sprint up field and become a blocker for you. I don't even have my fastest dude, but you can see how the blocking sets up that much better when you have essentially a fullback out of your running back spot. So this is a really good good run play. Um, you know, like I said, because you got that blocker. And if I put my fastest guy, it might be even better. Typically, you don't lose much on this play too. If you if you do get tackled for a loss, it usually won't be for a lot. I mean, right here because of that safety coming down, although he cleared him out. But typically, if you get tackled for a loss, it's like a yard or two. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. So just an inside, you know, inside sweep play. Uh, make sure you put your fastest receiver at the running back spot. I, I forgot to do that. So I don't know if I'll get too many explosive runs with uh, Hogan. But, uh, you know, typically your slot receiver is going to be your, your fa I could, I mean, if I had a real guy there, I probably could have juke both those guys. But you see it's a really consistent run play. There's nothing really else to it. Just spreads the defense out, and um, you know even the, the running back blocking is a really good addition to some of these some of these sweet plays. Um, ultimately, if you take a loss, it's not going to be a huge one because um, you're running so close to the line of scrimmage. But you can see right there, like the running back really sprung me by laying that block. Next up, we got the level sale. This play doesn't work as good as it did last year, but it's still pretty much a read to the running back. It's running back tight end. Um, as you can see, I mean, I'm getting a big play, but it's definitely, ooh, I think it's fumbled. And it's definitely a really good play, though, down the field. Um, you got a, a series of check downs on the other side, and like I said, you're pretty much just going tight end, running back. Did I get back-to-back -back fumbles? What kind of bull crap is that? But uh, that's pretty much the play. And like I said, obviously, all these check downs on the right side, one of these, one of these guys will be open. <laughs> one of these guys will be open pretty much every time on the other side. You don't really have a man beater that's too great, so you could always put one in a comeback route. Um, the furthest one out on a comeback route, so you have a, a reliable man beater other than just your tight end. Your tight end would probably be your best man beater at this point. Next up, I got the fade stops. So I'm just going to put the X on a comeback route and uh, block the running back for extra protection, but really this is all about the A route. The A route is going to really torch cover three. As you can see, I mean, it's, it's basically already set up that way. If I really want to spread it out a little more, just streak Olsen. And that'll spread it out even more. That'll, that'll create even more of a, you know, the, the, the safety really has to come in even more, as you can see there. It just makes it even easier. So, really an easy cover three play. Next up, we got the stick wheel. This play is pretty good right here. The running back's a nice route, uh, but you're really playing the uh, the B route here. He's going to play off of that little that little comeback. Um, so you really, I mean, I'm looking if, if if I have you know the running if that guy's just sitting there right in front of me. I mean, there's so much going on, on this side. You're really just looking for space. But if nobody sits on that A route, I'll take that. Obviously, the Y route's good, and then this in, this route right here is getting space. You know, you're just kind of reading those three receivers. The RB route is not really going to be in my reads too much. I don't really think he's going to do too much. But like I said, that, that guy makes the zone sit down. Uh, so he's open right over the top. So it's really, like I said, you're reading A, B. And if the Y route's open right away, I'll take that. So he was right there. But it's really, you know, that's just a bad throw. He was open again, but that was just a bad throw. So like I said, if the running back's open, I'll take it right away. If it's not, Cam Newton's throwing some great balls. So like I said, the running back's open right away, but if he's not, I'm reading the A route to the B route. And once again, the A route makes the zone sit on it, and the B route comes open over the top. So it really is you play. And if it's a, if you if you need the slant, I mean obviously the slant's going to be really good. I'm typically reading the other side, but the slant's going to be open a lot as well. Next up, we have the four verticals. 
This play here, I'm going to put uh, put more on a drag. If it's a cover two, um, that drag will come in handy to pull coverage back for Samuel. This whole play is really about the B route. Um, although the RB route and the A route will get open, you can see this guy here just got just gets open way way more to the outside. Whether it's cover three, cover four, um, it doesn't really matter. Here's a cover three or a cover one. If it's a cover one, I'm hitting a home run. If it's a cover three, um, I'll know right away because the cornerback drops back, and then I'll just hit him underneath. If I make a miss, I can I can take it up the sideline. You know, it, it's a scenario that can play out. Um, I could also put uh, this kind of drag. Like I know this isn't a cover two, so I can put him on a, a slant if I want. Um, this might be a cover one. No, it's still not. So they keep hitting me with cover threes. Um, so you know, but that's like stealing candy from a baby. I mean, it's just so it's so easy. So easy. So here we go. They're gonna do this again. Like I said, this might be a cover two. Obviously not though, because the cornerback dropped back so far. Um, it's a cover one. That's an interesting look. <laughs> If it is a cover one, Samuel's going to be a home run. Um, these inside routes, I, you know, I forget about them, but oh, here's a blitz. There we go. So I guess that's easy. <laughs> They're going to send a house blitz like that. You're going to have a lot of openings. So I had to pick a cover one because they're not going to give it to me otherwise. Um, this is pretty much going to be, you know, just going to wait till he turns up the field. And, you know, you can bullet, lob, whatever you want, as long as you get separation. He didn't catch it there. I mean, it's a pretty good cornerback covering my receiver. Um, but you can see he's going to get passed pretty much every time. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. This play... <laughs> This play right here, I mean, you don't have to make any adjustments. It's pretty good just like this. Uh, the, the underneath route, I mean, the A route is probably going to be the most money route other than the comeback route. Um, and then the RB route is really going to be good under coverages, like a lot of cover threes and whatnot. Um, he's going to get open. Uh, but, you know, you really have uh, just about everything here is going to work except for the B route. The B route's just going to uh, pull coverage for the most part. Um, and then, like I said, the comeback, oof. Comeback's going to be your best option against man. Um, as you can see right here, I mean, it looks like a man. Comeback route, like I said, that's your bailout route pretty much every time. Whether it's man or zone. Um, and then your A route. I mean, your A route's going to be the most consistent, especially against, you know, user coverage, because there's so many different routes going on. Um, your opponent's going to, you know, they, they might just disregard that one. Um, I would say, you know, if you put B on an in route, it'll give him a little bit more purpose. Other than um, you know, other than what he's doing, as we get a man coverage once again. <laughs> so the RB route used to be a really glitchy play. There we go. We finally get him open. <laughs> like I said, he'll get forgotten a lot of times, uh, especially in like cover threes. So don't forget about him underneath on a nice catch and run. Next up, out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. Uh, if you can run just like this, I mean, in the past I've motioned out that farthest receiver. Um, oh, he got lit up there, man. Like he punched him in the jaw. But you can see it was a big run. Uh, but, yeah, I find it's good just to run just like this. I don't necessarily um, need to make any motions. I think it's actually pretty good how, as it is. So here we go. Like I said, we're getting that now. Oh, man, just got to hold that block down, man. Just got to hold that block down. So I'm going to try motioning out this receiver just to see, you know, what the difference is. And you can see right there, I guess I got a little bit better. A little bit better spacing by motioning out the receiver. So we'll do that one more time. Like I said, he backs off a little bit, which is part of the reason motioning out that receiver's always been so successful for me, is it, is it backs away the cornerback. And then we get a nice, big, easy run. So we're going to do that one more time. Motion him out. And then, like I said, it just helps me to get to the edge. It's not always a huge play, but you can see I got much more than I did before. So motion in the mount. Like I said, cornerback drops off. And it's going to make it easier for me, and I would have been gone, man. It's one dude to beat, that Deion Jones, man. Speedy middle linebacker. Son of a bitch. It was like right here. He dropped down, so I know I'm probably going to have to cut this short. Actually, I don't. Yeah, no, he, uh, he must have dropped off or got blocked out of the way or something. But you can see it's a much easier run play. With um, with the motion, which matches a lot of pump, uh, a lot of pass plays that I put out anyway. 
So you shouldn't have an issue there. Like I said, he just got, man, he just came. That dude, that safety, typically those safeties blow that up. That dude was coming down to blow that up, and it didn't work out for him. He got blocked twice. So one more time. Just to show some consistency here. With the new setup. Oh, man, come on, bro. That dude, he's just, he's just playing lights out. He's really disrupting some things. <laughs> Emotional with the wrong guy, but it don't really matter. I'm willing to bet. Let's just see. It's the same idea. Like I said, it didn't matter. Still got a big run play out of it. Still close to 10 yards. Next up, we got the four verticals. So on the defensive side, we're going to go random 3-4. I'm just going to run this as is to show you that the uh, the underneath running back, the um, I'm not really sure what the route is, but that'll beat most things. The way that this play is designed, the, 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 the four verticals will pull routes back and the triangle route will be really good. But the, the route that I want to exploit are these outside routes. Now, essentially, you can see how right there it got, you know, I'm going to go ahead and move the ball to the middle because I want to exploit both sides. I don't want to just stick to one side. But you can see how these outside routes, especially if you motion them, will get outside of most coverages. Now, that was obviously cover three. Cover three and cover four is going to have that particular, um, you know, it's going to it's going to do that pretty much every time. If the guy follows, you can tell it's probably going to be a cover one man. And in that scenario, like I said, in that scenario, you can just throw it up because that's going to be obvious cover one beater. Um, cover two, there might be a safety there. Uh, but in cover one, like I said, when you got that cover three shell, that cover one shell look, um, the second he gets past that cornerback, it's just easy money. So you can steal that all day. But I'm going to go over individual coverages. I don't want to just go over random. I just wanted to show you that it can basically be just about any defense. But let's go ahead and let's break it down coverage by coverage, starting off with, like I said, cover three, because this one here is going to be a little bit different. They're all going to be a little bit different. But I would say cover three is one of the best uh, defenses this works against. Now, like I said, motioning this guy out, you can see right away that on this particular form of cover three, there's a guy sitting under that route. So what am I going to do? First First of all, I noticed that there's two defenders on the left side, only one defender on the right side. So obviously I want to run to the right side. So here we go once again. Now I, I've neglected to mention too, in cover threes, typically four verticals always be cover threes up the same. That's one of the, the weaknesses of, of, of cover threes. Uh, if you really want to make it, you know, you want to give yourself a little bit of a bigger window, put the circle route on a streak and then the X route will get open. You know, it'll just pull the safety a little bit to the left so that, you know, you'll get, you know, you'll get a little bit of a more of a throwing lane. But I'm still going to do this motion out because, like I said, I'm trying to create even more space uh, between the co cover three corner and the, the middle third defender. And by motioning that out, you're basically you know giving yourself a seam to throw pretty much every time. So like I said, put the circle route on a streak. He's going to run straight up the field with no angle, and that's going to uh, create a little bit more separation for the tight end. A little back shoulder throw, a little pass lead um, away from the safety is going to be best. But like I said, the really glitchy one is this R1 route. I mean, that, or the uh, is that the RB route? That's the one I really want to work because that's going to be open the most. It's going to be an instant open route, like you saw right there. You just have to basically, you know, get just kind of wait. I mean, you're just kind of waiting a second, as you can see right here. Let's just go ahead and we're just going to wait to turn to the field a little bit, and he's just going to be outside the defense pretty much every time. The only thing that really stops this is like a poor, accurate throw, which a lot of times Madden quarterbacks in this year's game can do. Um, especially if you try to throw it too quick, a lot of times, um, you know, that'll be an issue and it'll, it'll throw over the tight end's head. I also don't have a very good tight end. I mean, this is not, I mean, the Raiders don't have a tight end unless Jared Cook last year. Um, so just imagine if I was running this with like George Kittle or something like that. Like I would just be having so much more success and I'm still getting 15, 20 yards without, I mean, instantly. You know what I'm saying? It's like an instant 15, 20 yards. Nothing I really have to do other than just drop back and just, and just hook it out there. Um, you know, so, you know, you can't beat that. I mean, that's just, you know, plays like that. They'll drive your opponent insane. And this, this route on the outside will guarantee that your opponent cannot just pay attention to the streaks inside. I mean, that's, that's going to be their natural reaction is paying attention to these streaks inside. So if they start paying attention to the outside guy, you throw it to the inside tight end. If they have to pay attention to the inside tight end, you throw it to the outside guy. I mean, you, you really can't, essentially the only thing you can do is switch coverages, get out of the cover three. And that's when we get to the cover two beater. Say they cut, switch the cover two or cover or four I got a variation of this that will beat just about every one so by this point in the game your opponent probably ditched the cover three because they couldn't figure it out so I would say a lot of people's their next bet would probably be cover two so let's go ahead and let's pick Tampa two and then let's show you the variation for that now the setup for this is really simple all I'm gonna do is put the X route on a drag and I'm gonna block the running back that's it motion out the receiver like I did previously and uh, I don't even have to motion him out. I mean, I can leave him inside. It's going to be the same result, just as long as I get a good pass lead. But obviously, motioning him out is going to get him a little bit further away from that safety. But you don't have to motion him. I mean, you can leave it like it as is. You just have to make the adjustment. X on a drag, 
you know, put the running back on a pass block so you can have the time. And then the pass lead a lot of times will get it done, as you can see right there. I mean, I can move the ball back a little bit. You can see how far this ball travels in the air. So let's go ahead and let's move it back maybe like 10 yards so I don't have to worry about that again. But this is a bomb, man. I mean, this is this is a deep play. The cover two really has no no choice. <laughs> or, you know, they're going to leave cover two in a heartbeat, just like they left cover three if they stay in this. So, like I said, I mean, I, I like the I like the rollout a little bit. I did the motion there. You can see maybe that's why I, I had he ran out of the ran out of bounds. So, like I said, I'm not 100 percent sure what's the best way to do it, leaving him inside or motioning him out. They both work. That's the bottom line. But you can see now when I when I combine pass leading outside with the motion, um, you can see that a lot of times I'm just I'm shorting myself. I'm I'm throwing the ball out of bounds. Could be an accuracy issue once again. Derek Carr's not a great quarterback, um, but you can see. I mean, like right there when I bomb that up, there's just there's cover. He's gonna he's gonna have to bail cover two, cover three. They're gonna have to bail cover three. They're gonna have to bail cover two. Cover one man obviously doesn't work. We saw that as well um, there's really just no defense for this and you can see like this is so broken like he's catching the ball past the safety like by the time the ball lands to the receiver he's already outrun the safeties Next up, we got the jet sweep, and they have a jet sweep in this one that I actually really like. I mean, typically I don't like running, you know, sweeps and uh, reverses and trick plays like that because the the potential benefits can be outweighed by you know you getting tackled seven yards behind the line of scrimmage or something like that. But these jet plays, they don't have that same issue, and and, and you can see it's a pretty consistent play. As you can see I'm getting around the edge, I'm getting good blocking, and I'm getting about ten yards every time. But typically, if you get caught. In one of these jet plays you might lose a yard or two which is like that's i would take that all game you know what i'm saying like if i only lose a yard or two and the potential is a big play like you're seeing now i'm running this i should have antonio brown running this particular route but you can see even this guy who's you know he's somewhat fast i think he's like a 90 something speed so he's not necessarily the type of guy i mean i would love like a tyree kill run or something like that and probably be even more explosive but you can see how easily i'm getting good good yards and then like i said if i get caught what do I lose? A half a yard? I'll take that all game. It's, it, it's not the same type of risk you're taking with your typical end rounds and reverses. So I'll do a trick play like this all game and be happy with it. And like I said, it's, it's a pretty good play. It's pretty consistent anyway. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.